Now, in this example, they, they give you the pH in an initial concentration. So there's your pH, and this is your initial concentration, and they're asking for the Kb. So remember, we have, uh, in all these problems, when you're doing an ice table problem, you have initial, you have equilibrium, and you have K. Um, now, in this chapter, the only thing that we added was that once you know the equilibrium concentration, you can find pH or pOH, right? So you can find something about pH or pOH. In this case, they're giving you the pH. So if you know the pH, you can find a pOH. If you know a pOH, you can find the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide. So then this becomes an initial and equilibrium, then solve for K. So let's make our ice table and see where we go from there. Uh, we know our initial concentration here. We know that our draw e. Our initial concentration is 0.164. That's our initial concentration. Um, we can set up our ACE table. We don't know what. We, we're starting off with none of those. We have minus x plus x plus x. So at equilibrium, we have our initial 0.164 minus x, and then this is x and this is x. We can set up our, our KB expression, KB, let's just going to look like our weak base here, all this stuff is CH3, 2, so that's the, that's the conjugate acid plus of the weak base. We have our hydroxide ion concentration, all of that over our weak base, that's CH3, 2, and NH. All of that stuff. Now, if I knew what the KB was, I could just put all of this stuff in here and solve for X. But I don't know what the KB is. That's what I'm trying to find. I want to find the KB and then the PKB. So that means I must know X. Somehow I have to know what that X is. I, I must know what the hydroxide ion concentration is. So I go back up here and I see that they gave me the pH. They said the pH is 11.98. So I can find the pOH. How do I find the pOH? Just do 14 minus that, so 14 minus 11.98. And what does that give you? Work that out really quick, that's just 2.02. No calculator needed, 2.02. So if I know the pOH, then I can figure out what the hydroxide concentration is. And that's always at equilibrium. Whenever they give you the pH, they mean that's the pH at equilibrium. So this is the pOH at equilibrium, so I can find the hydroxide ion concentration at equilibrium. 10 to the negative 2.02. And then when we work that out, what do we get? 9.55 times 10 to the negative 3. 9.55 times 10 to the negative 3. And that is what x equals. That's equal to our x. So I can plug that in wherever I see x. So I have here at equilibrium 0 0.164 minus 9.55 times 10 to the negative 3. And then this is also just going to be 9.55 times 10 to the negative 3. And over here you have 9.55 times 10 to the negative 3. So I'm going to take all that and plug that in to our equilibrium constant expression. So take all of this stuff, plug that into our KB expression, and write that over here. So here I have KB. Maybe it's just equal to 9.55 times 10 to the negative 3 squared, right? Because it's this times this, divided by, and this is times 10 to the negative 3, I'll take it out, uh, divided by 0 0.164 minus 9.55 times 10 to the negative 3. And when you work all that out, you get 5.9 times 10 negative 4, and that's what KB is equal to. That's equal to our KB. Now this question is asking for one more thing. You can find a PKB, which don't confuse that with the pH or the POH. It's, it's the same notation. It's PKB, uh, so it's negative log of the KB. PKB is just negative log. It's just one more thing you could possibly calculate. I've sent to negative 4, but it doesn't tell you anything about the pH. This becomes 3.23. Um, and so this is one way that you can compare different bases by how big their, their PKA is, or, or by their PKA, sorry, their PKB or their PKA if you want to compare 
weak acids. All right, the last thing we want to do is look at the relationship between uh, Ka and Kb. Okay, so it turns out if you know one, you know the other. And the strength of your acid is determined by how big its Ka is, and the strength of the base is determined by how big the Kb is. So the bigger the Ka, the, the, the weaker the Kb for a conjugate acid-base pair. So for example, here we have um, HF is a weak acid, has a Ka of 6.8 times 10 negative 4. Um, its conjugate base is F minus. It has a Kb of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 11. And it turns out if you know the Ka of the, the acid, then you know the Kb of the conjugate base. And you can find those out using this relationship. And we'll prove it. But Ka times Kb is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So let's see how we got that. All right, so very quick proof. Turns out Ka times Kb is just equal to Kw. So if I had this acid, uh, suppose we had this acid, HF in water, I'm going to write the acid ionization. Um, F minus with H3O plus, that's for the weak acid, right? And I can write the Ka expression, and that's just hydronium times F minus over HF. And then for the base, base is going to look like, all right, F minus in water. Um, water is going to act as the acid, so it's going to donate a proton over there. You end up with, uh, I'm sorry, HF plus OH minus. So you end up with a KB that looks like HF times OH minus all over F minus. Now, if I multiplied my KA and my KB together, a whole bunch of things are going to drop out. So I have, this is my Ka expression, hydronium times F minus divided by HF times my Kb, HF times OH minus all over F minus. All right, so this is my Ka, and if I multiply it by my Kb, I'm sick enough. You can see a whole bunch of things are going to cancel. HF cancels, F minus cancels, and you end up with hydronium times hydroxide, which we already know from before it's equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Alright, so if you know Ka, then you know Kb because they're related through 1 times 10 to the negative 14.